Hello and welcome viewers, you're watching In Depth with your host Kriti Mishra. Prime Minister Modi's visit to Italy for the G7 summit assumed paramount significance as this was Prime Minister's first overseas travel after resuming office in his third consecutive term. It was an opportunity to engage with other world leaders present at the G7 summit on issues of importance to India as well as the Global South. This was India's 11th participation in G7 summit and Prime Minister Modi's fifth consecutive participation at the G7 summit. The group of seven or G7 is an informal grouping of seven of world's advanced economies including Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan and the UK and the US as well as the European Union. In this edition, we have packed everything for you about G7. Come along. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Saturday concluded his first foreign trip during his third term in office as he returned to the national capital from Italy after attending the G7 summit. He held bilaterals with several world leaders including British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, French President Emmanuel Macron and Pope Francis. In an address at the outreach session of the summit of G7 advanced economies in Italy, Prime Minister Modi said that India will work with all countries to make artificial intelligence transparent, fair, secure, accessible and responsible. The group of seven industrialized nations committed to promoting concrete infrastructure initiatives such as the India Middle East Europe Economic Corridor during the G7 summit. The developed economies will also commit to accelerating their transition away from fossil fuels during this decade. The G7 summit under Italian presidency chose some key priorities for the current year. In broad terms, these were conflict in Russia, Ukraine, Middle East with its consequences for the global agenda, relationship with developing nations and emerging economies with focus on Africa and the Indo-Pacific region, migration and together with climate energy linkages and food security, and lastly, the artificial intelligence. Prime Minister Modi's participation in the G7 summit also provided a timely opportunity to follow up on the outcomes of the G20 summit held under India's presidency last year and deliberate on issues which are significant for the Global South. On the sidelines of the G7 summit in Italy, Prime Minister Modi also held bilateral meetings and discussions with the leaders of the G7 as also the outreach countries and the international organizations. The G7, like the G20, is not an international organization. It does not have its own administrative apparatus, nor are its members permanently represented in any way. Due to the G7's informal structures, the country that holds the presidency has a particularly important role to play. It is responsible for organizing the summit and setting the agenda. At the annual summit meetings, the G7 heads of state and government take the opportunity to engage in face-to-face -face talks where they exchange views on global political issues and agree on common positions and goals. The presidency rotates between members on an annual basis. So what does the G7 stand for? The G7 sees itself as an association of nations bound by shared values, whose members are committed to freedom and human rights, democracy and the rule of law, prosperity and sustainable development. Given the economic and political weight of G7 members, the group's decisions influence numerous other countries and international organizations. Although the decisions made by the G7 are not legally binding, they do have a tangible political impact. What is the historical background of G7? The group was established as a platform for economic and financial cooperation in response to the 1973 energy crisis. The first summit of heads of state and government was held in 1975 in France. It included France, the United States of America, the United Kingdom, Germany, Japan and Italy. In 1976, with the admission of Canada, the G7 took its current configuration. 
Since 1977, representatives of the European Economic Community, now the European Union, also participated in the work of the group. The EU does not hold the rotating presidency of the G7. The G7 expanded into G8 between 1997 and 2013 with the inclusion of Russia. However, Russia's participation was suspended in 2014 following the annexation of Crimea. So how does the G7 work? Well, compared to international organization, the G7 does not have a permanent administrative structure. Each year, starting from the 1st of January, one of the member states takes over the presidency of the group in a rotating basis. The nation holding the presidency serves as a temporary secretariat and hosts the group work and the leaders' summit. Most importantly, the presidency plays a key role in setting the agenda and identifying key priorities. On January 1, 2024, Italy assumed the presidency for the seventh time in its history, succeeding Japan, and will hand it over to Canada on December 31, 2024. The summit is attended by the heads of state and government of the seven member states, representatives of the European Union, as well as states and international organizations invited by the presidency. So what has the G7 achieved till date? Well, the G7 summit paves the way for numerous multilateral initiatives and agreements. In the first few years after the G7 had been established in 1975, the focus was mainly on global economy. But in the 1980s, this was expanded to include foreign policy and security policy. Nowadays, a wide range of different economic, climate, environmental and socio-political issues are discussed. In recent years, the G7 has achieved many advances such as stabilizing the financial markets, reforming international corporate taxation, especially for large digital corporations, containing AIDS, tuberculosis and malaria, and strengthening women's rights and combating climate change. Dialogue with emerging economies and developing nations. The G7's engagement with inclusion of emerging economies and developing nations has evolved alongside the progressive expansion of the group's agenda. A notable example was the 2001 summit where Italy pioneered the African segment. This segment featured dedicated dialogue sessions between G7 leaders and representatives of invited African nations. This process has continued over the following decades where the G7 focus has continued to expand, shifting to address a wide array of global issues, including the climate energy nexus and food security. So why was India again invited to G7? Well, the G7 is a group of countries with advanced economies and with a GDP of more than $3.94 trillion dollars India boasts an economy larger than four G7 members, that is Canada, France, Italy and the UK, and is one of the fastest growing economies worldwide. The largest democracy of the world brings much more to the table. India's strategic partnerships with multiple G7 countries, including the US, UK, France, Germany and Japan, further underscore its significance. Additionally, India plays a crucial role in the Indo-Pacific region, serving as a counterbalance to China's assertiveness. Its improving relations with Italy, coupled with its long-standing ties with Russia and numerous African nations, position India as a key player in discussions on economic security, geopolitical stability and development. As a major democracy and a rising economic power, India's participation is key in resolving global governance challenges and today, more than any other time in recent history, New Delhi is willing to play a role in providing solutions to global problems. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's focus is also on showcasing India as a responsible global stakeholder. As he highlighted India achieving the target of 40% energy capacity from non-fossil sources, nine years before time, and invited the G7 countries to invest in the vast, untapped market for clean energy technologies. At a time when the world order is intensely polarized, India remains one of the few nations which can engage with both the G7 and BRICS in a matter of days with Elan. 
New Delhi has been consistent about its stance on global matters and in the process has managed to generate a sense of trust with its varied interlocutors. Wars and violent conflicts, global hunger, a debt crisis and a climate emergency. Well, the world is currently experiencing multiple crises that are reversing the significant progress already made in recent decades on the road to ending extreme poverty. The World Bank estimates that recent crises have pushed the world further off track from the global goal of ending extreme poverty by 2030. The rate of decreasing global poverty hasn't just slowed down, it's gone in the opposite direction. According to the World Food Programme, 828 million people go to bed hungry every day. And the number of people globally who have been displaced from their homes just surpassed 110 million a staggering milestone, according to UNHRC. The need to act now is greater than ever. Because amid all the crises, we must not forget that just a sustainable and healthy future for all people everywhere is possible. The roadmap for achieving this is the United Nations Global Goals. Goals that work together to end extreme poverty and its systemic causes from climate change to gender inequality, from health inequity to hunger. Amid the ongoing global crisis, the G7 assumes paramount importance for global unity and cooperation. संसद टीवी के और भी प्रोग्राम्स देखने के लिए सब्सक्राइब करें हमारा यूट्यूब चैनल और हाँ इन्हें लाइक और शेयर करना ना भूलें